Hey everybody, it's story time with Miss J. And I'm so glad all of you could make it today. But I want to know if you're having a fantastic Friday. If you're having a fantastic Friday, shout really loud so Shimmer and I can hear you, okay? One, two, three, go. Oh my goodness. All of you are having fantastic Fridays. That is fantastic. <laughs> I'm Miss J, but I want to know your name. So please say your name really loud so we can hear you, okay? Go. Okay, so we have Mark and Teresa, Jenny and Jeannie and Mike and Paradise, Diamond and Amani and Dominique and Maria and John and Casey and more. And I'm so glad all of you could join us today. Let's all say hi to Shimmer. Hi, Shimmer. Hi, Miss J. Hi, friends at home. I'm so glad I can join you today. Me too. Shimmer, you're such a good friend. Aw, thanks, Miss J. You're such a good friend. And as a matter of fact, my question today is, what makes a good friend? Oh, Shimmer, that is a good question. What makes a good friend? So friends at home, I'll give you an example. So for me, a good friend would be someone that's there for me and listens and makes time for me as well as me make time for them. And we can be ourselves around each other and super silly. And we won't, we don't really have to worry about pretending to be someone or kind of faking who we are that we can just be ourselves around each other. So friends at home, turn to the person that's next to you and tell them what makes a good friend to you. Wow, those are really good qualities in a good friend. Now, speaking of good friends, today we'll be reading Clover Kitty Goes to Kitty Garden, where she has a little sensory sensitivity, but with a good friend, she's able to make it through Kitty Garden. Let's get started. Clover Kitty does not want to go to Kitty Garden. Although she might like a friend to play with, Kitty Garden feels overwhelming for a sensory, sensitive kitty like Clover. And when she arrives, it is exactly as she fears. Her classroom is too loud, the lights are too bright, and everyone comes too close. So Clover throws a fit and decides to quit Kitty Garden. But when a classroom comes to check on her, she begins to reconsider. Maybe it's time for Clover to give Kitty Garden another chance. Clover Kitty liked calm things. Knitting mittens, nibbling kibble, cat napping on a warm floor. Sometimes she wished she had a friend to knit or nibble or nap with. But mostly, life was perfect. Until... One Monday morning, Mama Kitty announced, Do you remember what today is? the first day of Kitty Garden. Are you ready for friends and games and songs? Pictures of high fives and curly slides, dusty chalk and gluey paws filled Clover's head. She was not ready. Oh no. But quicker than a whisker twitch, Clover found herself cowering in Miss Snappy Tail's classroom. Blocks clattered, neon numbers crowded the walls. Sunshine glared through the window. A paw touched Clover's shoulder, and she flinched. Hi, I'm Oliver, said the kitty. Clover's mouth was as dry as cotton. She couldn't meow a single word. Oliver smiled anyway. Miss Snappy Tail flashed spotlights off and on. Time for counting! Next, she rang a bell. But to Clover, it sounded like a gong. Circle time. Then she forced the kittens to sit on the crowded story time rug. Kitty Garden was a catastrophe. Oh, look how sad she looks. There with the loud gong over here. Hmm, must be so overwhelming. Did any of you get overwhelmed in kindergarten? Were any of you overwhelmed in kindergarten? Hmm. At recess, Oliver came over and asked softly, 
Do you want to seesaw with me? Before she could answer, a squealing tornado of fangs and fur circled Clover. You're it. Hey, Clover. You'll be a princess, and I'll rescue you. Catch, Clover. Clover looked blank. She shrank. Clover's heart sank. At lunch, the cafeteria lights blinded Clover. Do you like the juice, Clover? asked Oliver. Catnip cookies. Milk. Who wants to trade tuna for my spaghetti? Clover grabbed. She jabbed. Her tiny claws stabbed. Clover could not wait for nap time. But nap time was a disaster. Miss Snappy Tail's perfume stank like licorice. Sweet dreams, Clover, said Oliver. Nap time. Share my rod. Rock a bye kitty in the treetop. A treetop? Clover's belly swayed, but she couldn't sleep on her scratchy mat. She tried. She sighed. Clover Kitty quietly cried. School felt nine lives long, maybe ten. After nap time, Miss Snappy Tail marched the kitties through the school like prisoners. A tail touched Clover's face in her personal space. That was it. Clover spit. She bit. She threw a fur-flying hissy fit. I quit. Clover fled. See you tomorrow, Clover? Asked Oliver. Oh, she's running away. And they're like, wait, come back. It took Clover forever to reach home. You look like you had an exciting day, said Mama. Then her whiskers drooped. Are you okay, Clover? Without a meow, Clover curled into a circle. Mama rubbed just behind Clover's left ear until Clover fell asleep. Aww. How do your parents comfort you when you're feeling sad? I know when I was growing up, my mom used to rub my head and put her fingers through my hair, and that would calm me down. Tuesday morning, Clover said, Mama, I feel sick from icky catnip cookies. All right, Mama said. No kitty garden today. Clover snoozed all morning in her soothing room. Later, Oliver Kitty stopped by. We miss Clover, he said to Mama. She's resting, said Mama. You'll see her tomorrow. Clover was playing checkers alone in her closet. She won. Phew, she said when Oliver left. Wednesday morning, Clover was still sick. Are you sure? Mama asked. I'm sure. Oliver came back that afternoon. Mama said, Clover is still resting, but you may say hi. Oliver searched Clover's room, but Clover was not there. When Oliver gave up and left, Clover sighed in relief. Although, a hollow twinge twanged in her chest. Thursday morning, Clover was almost better. <coughs> she almost coughed. I'm too sick for school, but I feel just well enough to seesaw. Are you sure? Mama asked. Positive, Clover said. Okay, but tomorrow you will go to kitty garden, <coughs> Clover said. Seesawing by herself had its ups and downs, mostly downs. Clover watched for Oliver. He didn't come. What would it be like to play with a friend? Clover wondered. But she did not miss Kitty Garden. Did she? On Friday morning, Clover was ready to try Kitty Garden again. I'm so glad, Mama said. Clover stuffed her backpack with survival gear. She used sunglasses when Miss Snappy Tail flashed the spotlights, earmuffs to soften the circle time gong, and her own silky knitted rug for story time. That's a good way to get herself ready for kitty garden. 
At recess, Clover played checkers with Oliver. Then she needed alone time. At lunch, Clover nibbled cheese and sipped juice. Mmm, yummy. At nap time, Clover slept next to her new friend, Oliver, on her silky rug with plenty of space between them. Aww. Clover's day wasn't perfect, but it was not a catastrophe. And when she came home, Mama rubbed the spot behind Clover's left ear and listened to her tales of her day. So Clover decided to go to Kitty Garden the next week, and the week after that, too. Each week got easier. It helped to have a calm, kind friend like Oliver. Meow days, Clover can't wait to go to Kitty Garden. And some days, she can't wait to go home. Kitty Garden has its ups and downs. Mostly ups. <laughs> and the end. Next week, we'll be reading The Name Jar by Young Suk Choi. Do you want to hear more stories? Well, you're in luck. Check out my past videos to hear more awesome stories. I hope you had as much fun as Shimmer and I did. Until next time, have a great rest of your Friday. Bye!